Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for a very exciting Costa Cruise Line webinar. My name is Anna. I'm an industry relations specialist here at CLIA, and I'm going to just quickly go through some housekeeping before introducing our presenter. The webinar will run about 45 minutes with time for questions at the end. Please feel free to type your questions into the questions module of the webinar, and we'll get to them at the conclusion of the presentation. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted on CLIA's YouTube channel, which is CLIA Global. And with that, it is my pleasure to introduce our presenter, Silvio Alonso. Silvio, Director of Strategic Partnerships at Costa North America, has been in the travel industry for 29 years, 25 of which have been in the cruise industry. Starting in reservations at Royal Caribbean in 1990, he held various inventory control positions at that organization before transitioning to revenue management in 1995. He held the position of Senior Revenue Management Analyst before leaving RCCL, and in 2002, he joined the Club Med North American team as Pricing Manager, where he remained for four years. Joining Costa in 2006 as Director of Revenue Management, Silvio returned to his cruise industry roots, and in 2010, he joined the sales force, where he, he became the Director of Strategic Partnerships, currently covering Costa's key partners in North America. And with that, take it away, Silvio. Thank you so much, Anna. Thank you so much, everybody. Gosh, I'm kind of tired just hearing that bio. I don't know. You know, time flies when you're having fun, right? So 29 years later, here we are. Uh, it is a great industry to be in. I'm really happy to be a part of it. Really happy to be here today presenting to everybody. So thanks so much for joining me. Uh, Sylvia Alonso, Director of Strategic Partnerships. And uh, let's get started. So Costa, we're having a little bit of a problem here. Let's see. Sometimes it just gets a little temperamental. So Costa has been uh, operating cruises for uh, 70 years. Our first cruise, the uh, cruise ship, the Anna C, made her voyage um, in 1949. And so we've been celebrating our 70th anniversary all of this year, 70 years later in 2019. The Anna C is, is, um, was our first cruise and our, our, the historical origins of Costa Cruise Line go way back to 1854 when Giacomo Costa, the Costa family, founded an olive oil export company in Genoa, and uh, they started uh, acquiring ships to transport their olive oil around Italy, around Europe, and about 100 years later, give or take, they founded Costa Cruise Line. Our official colors, yellow and blue. Blue obviously stands for the ocean, and yellow stands for olive oil. It's a historical a nod to our historical origins, if you will. Do it this way. Sorry, guys. Uh, we are very proud to announce uh, today, uh, very near future, our brand new ship, the Costa Smeralda, which will be uh, the first ship to be launched that will be propelled by liquefied natural gas. It's a new propulsion technology, which is uh, better for the environment, more economically uh, feasible. It takes up less space on the ship, so it opens up more of the ship to public areas. Uh, she will be our largest ship by far, 182,700 tons. Over 6,500 guests, including all triples and quads, over 1,100 feet long, and over 64% of the ship's, the ship's cabins will feature balconies. And she is coming very soon. She'll be introduced uh, at the end of November of 2019, and she will be operating a Western Mediterranean itinerary year-round. And we'll be talking about the itinerary uh, later in the presentation. So Costa today. Uh, we were acquired by Carnival Corporation in 1997. We are a proud member of world's leading cruise lines, the Carnival Corporation family of brands. They are made up there at the bottom left of Cunard, Holland America, Carnival, Princess Seaborn, and Costa. Those are the brands that make up the world's leading cruise lines that make up 50% of the cruise market in North America. One out of every two guests going on a cruise in North America will sail on one of the world's leading cruise lines brands. One out of every two guests, coincidentally, fun fact, going on a cruise for the first time, will sail on Carnival Cruise Line. And one, almost one out of every two guests going on a cruise in Europe will sail on Costa. We have almost 50% market share along Costa with our German brand Aida, which make up Costa Criteri, almost 50% uh, of the cruise market in Europe. So we are by far one of the largest, if not the largest operator in Europe, the fourth largest cruise line in the world, 15 ships with the 16th coming very soon with it, which is the Costa Smeralda. Uh, so we're a very large line in Europe, as I mentioned, and we're North America's preferred line for authentic European vacations, uh, cruise vacations. That's really what uh, makes us stand apart from a lot of the other brands is that we are much more international European, if you will, and we'll cover 
that throughout the presentation. Very happy, uh, you know, and sustainability is very important to us. That's one of the reasons why we decided to move to LNG along with the economic impact. We have a, a very a few charitable uh, foundations that we work with. Two in particular that we're very proud of is Food, food For Good Food, which is to make sure uh, food sustainability on board and to minimize food waste. And also the Banco Alimentari, which is an organization that helps us by debarking excess food in, uh, in towns and cities around Europe where we sail and it helps to donate that food to charitable organization food program. So we're very proud of that. Uh, sustainability, as I mentioned, is very important to Costa. And last but not least, Porthole Readers have awarded us best Mediterranean itineraries 18 years in a row. Obviously, as I mentioned, we were founded in the Mediterranean. We like to say that we send the ships around the world in the winter, and then most of them do come back home to Europe and the Mediterranean in the summer. The Mediterranean being founded in Italy is our home. We've been doing it the longest. We do it, in my opinion, the best. And uh, 18 years in a row, Porthole Magazine has agreed with us in terms of itineraries. And itinerary will often be the driver, one of the key drivers that leads somebody to a Costa cruise. So please do keep that in mind, very important. So what is Costa's experience different, uh, makes it different? As I mentioned, we're positioning ourselves as Italy's finest. Uh, first of all, cruising is a great value, up to 60% less than what you would do on a comparable itinerary or program on a land-based vacation. It's an, a vacation that embodies a uniquely Italian passion for cruise. We're all about celebrating all things Italian, all things European. Uh, love, laughter, la dolce vita, amore, that passion, that zest for life, that's purely Italian. Italy is, I've heard a uh, recent statistic that Italy is the number one destination for uh, Americans traveling overseas to go to Europe. So we bring that Italian experience on board the ship as well. Not only Italian, because Italy is our first market worldwide where we generate the most passengers from, but France is number two, Spain is number three, Germany is number four, UK comes in there at number five, I think Switzerland is in there as number six now, and then the United States, Canada, Mexico come in around the world at number seven, sometimes eight, depending on the itinerary. Now, what's important is, by virtue of knowing those demographics, we know that it is going to be a much more international, multilingual, multicultural experience. Those five languages that I mentioned, uh, Italian, French, Spanish, German, English, are our five official languages. We have now actually introduced a sixth official language, which is Portuguese, because our Brazilian market has started to develop quite a bit as well. So you will hear as much, if not more, of all of those languages as you will of English. So it's going to be a very different experience in the sense that when people go on a Costa cruise, they're traveling with people from around the world, from around Europe, you're going to hear all of those languages from around the world, around Europe as well. So that's definitely one of the key differentiators to keep in mind. Even though we operate very much like a, uh, a very mass market line in Europe, we because our product is so different, we operate very much like a niche player here in North America. And a niche, by definition, a very simple definition, is an, uh, a, a product that specializes in one service or product that appeals to a select segment. It specializes in one segment of the market. So uh, some of the niches that exist in travel are destination collectors, food lovers. I'm going to talk about our food on board, of course. History buffs. We'll talk about many of these niches throughout the presentation. Art lovers, wine lovers, music lovers, romantics, adventure seekers. We have great spa programs on board as well. People watchers. For people that are people watchers, you have uh, international clientele sailing with people from all around the world, as I mentioned. And then last but not least, we travel to some very significant cultural sites around the world, as well as some very important religious sites around the world as well. So these are some of the niches that exist in travel today and some of the niches that I think that Costa serves very well that we'll cover uh, throughout the presentation. So who is Costa's experience potentially good for? First of all, niche travel is a vast potential market. It's an underserved and growing market in travel. And it's obviously for a person that seeks one or more of those travel niches, wants that full immersion experience, not an American Canadian hotel, if you will, they're going to be sailing in an authentic European experience. Also, the quality, the value, the service, the comfort, and the reliability, and that hassle-free international experience without the international price tag. Your ship takes you to your destinations around Europe, around the world. If you were to do a comparable uh, destination vacation on land, 
you'd be looking at well more than the price that people would have to pay for a cruise. And definitely a lot less than the myth of people thinking that you're going to have to pay hundreds of dollars a day to be able to see Europe. And you'll see some of the itineraries that we'll cover, some of our key itineraries do cover many of the marquee ports around the Eastern and Western Mediterranean. So speaking of food, uh, obviously being an Italian company, we have taken great care to cultivate our menus, our wine lists, et cetera. Uh, Bruno Barbieri, who is a Michelin five-star rated chef, has helped us to create our menus fleet-wide, gala menus that uh, celebrate the regions of Europe and uh, Italy that we visit. Uh, a little bit about dining on Costa, because we are more of a European cruise line, our dining times do tend to be somewhat later than you would find on other uh, more North American oriented lines. Uh, main seating can be about 7 to 7.30. Late seating can be as late as 9, 9.15 in Europe. So that's something to remember. When we're sailing out of Fort Lauderdale in the Caribbean, those hours tend to be rolled back about a half an hour earlier because we do uh, kind of fine tune the product to a more North American based clientele. But Europeans definitely, they do tend to dine later, do tend to dine a little bit longer. The service in the dining room is a little bit longer experience than what you might find on other brands. Um, they're not, in the, not to say that other brands are in a rush to take you, take you in and out by, by any means, but it's just a little bit more European style service, which tends to be a little bit slower between the courses, have another glass of wine conversation, et cetera. Also, our menus tend to be representative of both Northern and Southern Italian cuisine. And Northern Italian cuisine is somewhat different than Southern Italian cuisine. It's lighter, more grilled meat, grilled fish, a little bit less of the red sauce, cheese, all the good stuff that we tend to associate more about Italian food here in North America. And not to say that we don't have all of that, but we are as representative of Northern Italian cuisine as we are of Southern. As a matter of fact, you will see more and more restaurants that will say specializing in Northern Italian cuisine because they really are that different. Another difference that I wanted to point out is the onboard currency in Europe would be euros, being a more, North, a more European oriented line. If your cruise begins in Europe, it will be onboard currency in Euro. If you begin in the United States, your onboard currency would be US dollars. Um, that's another difference. Now, in addition to our main dining, we do have great restaurants on board that uh, specialty dining experiences that range anywhere from 15 to $35 per person. It's a really great value. You can buy packages on board as well, where you can get two or three of these specialty dining restaurants at a package price. Some of the highlights include a Pacific Fusion restaurant, which is a combination of Peruvian and Asian cuisine. We have a burger bar, a pizzeria, gelateria available on board. All of the ships have a supper club. We have outdoor dining, al fresco, uh, the lobster bar featuring seafood. And um, some of our ships also feature tempanaki. So you can see a really vast, wide variety of dining options for your guests to enjoy. A really nice feature on select ships, the mozzarella bar. Well, they actually make fresh mozzarella on board and use it in dishes that are prepared right there for your guests to enjoy. I do get asked a lot about the smoking policy. There is no smoking indoors, not in the restaurants, not indoors on any of our ships. That policy has been put in place for almost five years now. And uh, when we say no smoking indoors, not even in the casino, the only smoking sections that are allowed are outdoors, public areas, have designated smoking sections. If your ship has a cigar lounge, there's smoking allowed in there. And um, there is still smoking allowed on the balconies. That is one difference between us and some of our sister brands in the Carnival Corporation. Okay, so Italy's finest, as I mentioned, we're Italy's finest cruise line. We started pairing with some of Italy's finest brands, not only in terms of marketing, but also these are the brands that your guests will be able to enjoy on board. So for example, Barilla is the official pasta utilized on Costa Cruise Lines. And we have a pasta or risotto course that is served every lunch and every dinner. It really is one of the highlights of the cruises in the main dining room. Uh, Ely Coffee is a very high-end, fine Italian roast, espresso and coffee company. That's the coffee that we use on board. You'll see Ely Coffee machines all around the ship. Ferrari, all of, around all of our ships. Ferrari is a really high-end Italian winemaker, not only sparkling wine, but also uh, regular wine as well. And we have Ferrari wine bars available all over the ship. Ferrari happens to be one of my favorite Proseccos. It's really a very high-end Prosecco that's really nice. And we have those available on board as well. 
Aperol is an Italian liqueur, uh, similar to Campari, but somewhat lighter. And the Aperol Spritz is really uh, a drink that's really coming into favor around the world. I'm not sure if you've had a chance to drink, th drink them, but they're very popular in Miami, where I'm from, in Montreal, where I go for business all the time. I've seen them a lot of places. They're really coming into their own. We have Aperol bars available all around the ship as well. So you really get a sense here of that Italian dolce vita, that zest for life, that we celebrate all things Italian, all things European. Uh, some of the things that your guests will be able to enjoy on board one of Costa's ships and taking our wine list very seriously. The Banca Polenza, which is a food and beverage university in, um, in, in Italy, has taken uh, great care to help us cultivate our wine list, pair it with our cuisine, and really celebrate all of the popular wine regions of Europe, around the world, uh, including the United States as well. You'll find California wines served as well also. So uh, we do have great kids programs available on board as well. We do transport kids in the, in the summer, just more kids in the summer, just like you would find on uh, many other cruise lines. Uh, the kids are out of school in Europe. One feature that we have on board Costa ships is we do feature exclusive offers, exclusive events with Peppa Pig and exclusive activities with Peppa Pig. And if you have not heard of Peppa Pig, the kids go absolutely crazy for her. They, she is a cartoon character that is translated into over 40 languages, over 100 countries around the world. And uh, it's an educational cartoon, so she's really popular. That, those events with Peppa Pig and activities with Peppa Pig are featured exclusively on Costa. Also a fun event is the captain or princess for the day. Uh, the kids, you know, for a nominal fee, they'll dress them up as a captain or the princess for the day. The parents get to let the kids go. They, they dress up like in their costumes and then they do a really fun parade around the ship uh, later in the evening. It's a really fun way for the kids to spend their day. Uh, the kids program is called the Squawk Kids Program, S-Q-U-O-K. And those counselors in the kids programs are really uh, fluent in all five, six of those official languages. They really do a great job uh, taking care of the kids and making sure that they're entertained. And the kids get to make friends with other kids from around the world. So it's a really fun experience that uh, the kids get to enjoy and make friends from around the world. And these days with social media, it's a lot easier for kids to make friends and keep in touch. So uh, it's a really fun experience for families as well. So that's a little bit about Costa. And I think I've covered uh, most of the highlights of our brand and what differentiates us from other brands. But I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation that itineraries is often, destinations are often the driver to a Costa cruise. So I'm gonna cover some of the itineraries, some of our key itineraries in Europe and around the world. Now, this is by no means all of our itineraries. Obviously, we would be here for hours if I were to try to do that. But these are some of our most popular itineraries, two of them being Eastern Mediterranean and Western Mediterranean. And we have a very easy way to distinguish between Eastern Med and Western Med. If you think of Italy, it's kind of that boot that jets out into the Mediterranean Sea. Everything to the west of Italy, we call Western Mediterranean. Everything to the east of Italy, we call Eastern Mediterranean. Everything to the north of Italy, we call Northern Europe. So it's a very easy way. If you just think of the boot as that dividing point between east, west, north, that's a very easy way to remember what itinerary is sailing where. This itinerary, which will be taken over by Costa Smeralda when she sails uh, later this year, when she's launched on November 30th of uh, 2019, this is kind of like the quintessential marquee Western Mediterranean uh, cruise. Uh, you visit most people sailing on this ship will sail out of Barcelona. That's the most popular destination for embarkation for guests sailing out of, Bar uh, out of North America. However, we allow you to embark in Barcelona, Marseille, Savona, or Civitavecchia, which is an hour outside of Rome. So if you get on in Rome, your ship, you would remain on the ship for seven nights until the ship gets back to Rome. If you get on in Marseille, you would stay on for seven nights until the ship gets back to Marseille. If you get on in Barcelona, same thing. So it's not that we allow you to go between ports, it's that you can embark in any of these ports and make that a seven night cruise starting wherever you embark. So it's a great option for people if they wanna to get to know Barcelona, or if somebody says, I wanna spend extra time in Rome, there may be availability on that cruise for people to embark in Rome. So we really open up a lot of the Mediterranean to guests by uh, allowing them to embark in the port of their choice. Now, in addition to those three ports of call, the two uh, in Italy, the Civitavecchia and Barcelona, 
So to stop in Marseille, that call has all of the south of France, Bordeaux, Aix-en-Provence, all that area of the south of France is available uh, at your guest disposal. Palma de Mallorca is a really fantastic island right off the coast of Spain and the ship docks right in the middle of the town, very similar to what happens in Barcelona. Rome, as I mentioned, to Vitebeke is like an hour outside of Rome. La Spezia is the key to key gateway to Florence and Pisa, which is another marquee destination in Italy. And then most guests taking this cruise will embark in Savona from Europe. Now, Savona sounds maybe like not the most well-known port of call, and it certainly is not when you compare it to some of these others, but the excursions in Savona to, Flo to Monte Carlo, to Torino, to Portofino, Santa Margarita, there's just some amazing, amazing excursions available for guests to do in Savona. So if you do have a guest that's taking a Western Mediterranean itinerary with a stop in Savona, I really highly encourage you to make the recommendation that they look into the excursions. They really are some of the best to be found anywhere in Europe. So another great itinerary, uh, Western Mediterranean itinerary on Costa di Adema, which is our currently, before the introduction of Smeraldo, is our largest ship. She's just under 3,800 passengers, double occupancy. And this seven night cruise, again, most people will embark in Barcelona, Marseille, that stop in Savona, Naples and Palermo, but in the peak summer, which is June, July, and August, this uh, cruise also does an overnight stop in Ibiza, which is one of the party capitals, another island off the coast of Spain, one of the party dance capitals of Europe. And this is one of the only cruises, I think the only cruise I've seen, that allows guests to take advantage of Ibiza's nightlife. So in June, July, and August, she calls on Ibiza. In the shoulder season, summer, and excuse me, spring and fall, she will call in Valencia, which is another great uh, port of call um, in Spain as well. Now, I do want to mention one thing uh, before I go back, before I move forward. This itinerary, the seven-night Western Mediterranean itinerary, is available year-round. I forgot to mention that. And why that is important is because having that Western Mediterranean itinerary available year-round allows people to go to Europe, obviously, during the off-peak season. And what the benefits of going during the off-peak, number one, it's not as hot. Number two, it's not as crowded. And number three, you can get better deals as well, not only in terms of cruise fares, but airfares tend to be significantly less. And springtime in Europe, May in Europe happens to be my favorite time to go to Europe. There's nothing wrong with going in June, July, and August, but springtime in Europe is a really beautiful time to take advantage of this itinerary, not only in terms of the weather, but also in terms of the better pr pricing that's available. So please do keep that in mind because we are in the business of making people, you know, dreams come true, not to get too corny, but that is what we do. And, uh, you know, somebody may say, well, I don't know if I can afford a cruise in Europe. If you have that client, definitely think about shoulder season, spring or fall, or even winter in Europe, because potentially it could make it much, much more affordable. Uh, now, these itineraries, now we're going moving in the other direction toward the Eastern Mediterranean. Here you can vividly see that boot, everything to the east, we call it Eastern Med. So we have two ships sailing out of Venice every summer. For summer of 2020, the first one will be Costa de Liziosa. She's just over 92,000 tons, 2,260 guests, double occupancy. As I mentioned, we have two Eastern Mediterranean itineraries to the Greek Isles and ports in the Eastern Med. This one, both of them will sail out of Venice. A call in Bari, which is off the co on, on the southern coast of Italy. And if I had to characterize this cruise, I would say that this is more beach oriented. Corfu, Mykonos, and Santorini, three of the key beach towns, if you will, in marquee beach towns, beach communities in uh, the Greek Isles. And then this cruise stops in Dubrovnik, which is a port of call in Croatia. Again, for those destination collectors, that niche. The Croatia is one of the real hot spots in cruising and tourism in the world right now. I have not been fortunate enough to go. I think I might be going next year. And I got to tell you, I am really looking forward to it because I have yet to meet one person that I've asked, how did you like Croatia that has come back and said nothing but amazing, spectacular things about it. Now one person has told me, oh, it's okay. Everybody has absolutely raved about it. So this itinerary uh, is really special in terms of the offerings in the Greek Isles, Croatia, and the south of Italy. Now the Greek Isles itinerary season is getting longer and longer. It's almost year round, not quite, but there's a lot of shoulder inventory available in the Greek Isles out of Venice as well. As somebody's looking for maybe a little bit more cost-effective time to go to the Greek Isles. And another interesting fact 
about sailing out of Venice is you may be aware that the Venetian government, the Italian government has capped the size of the ships that can get in and out of Venice so that they will allow to operate in and out of Venice. So this is about as big as you can get. I think the maximum double occupancy count on a ship that will allow sailing out of Venice is about 20, 2,500 people somewhere in that neighborhood. So why is that important is because if somebody's looking for more of a mid-sized European cruise, Venice may be a good option for them. All of the larger four or five passenger, thousand passenger ships and above, those all will need to operate out of ports other than Venice, usually to the Western Mediterranean. So it's I just bring that up because, you know, itinerary, cruise line, ship size, activities, those are kind of like the key qualifiers that people, you know, may, may be giving you information. So if you, if those come up, I would just like to you know, give you that little piece of information so that you can maybe use it to qualify your guests toward more of an Eastern Mediterranean cruise. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, one of those niches is the art lovers. Uh, we do have fantastic art collections available for your passengers viewing all over our fleet. These are a few examples of our art. I'm gonna point them out, our artwork where I can. Uh, first of all, on the right, you have a picture there of our Grand Bar Eletra. That is a, um, uh, one of the lounges available on board. Uh, the Casa del Isiotto, all of this glasswork that you see is all Murano glass. Uh, Murano glass is made, has been made hand blown glass, made for over a thousand years on one specific island off the coast of Venice. It's kind of like that glass blowing technique was then sent around the world. So it's very much one of the leaders in, in hand blown glass. It's very expensive, very fine glasswork, and all of the Casa's ships. All of Costa's ship's glasswork is all Murano glass. So that's very artistic in and of itself. Another great example of one of our art pieces there at the left is the sculpture on board Costa Deliciosa. That piece is by Arnoldo Pomodoro. He's an Italian sculptor. Uh, it's called Sfera con Sfera, which means sphere within a sphere. Um, uh, he actually has work exhibited also at the United Nations and at the Vatican Museum. So he's a very world-renowned sculptor, and that piece is uh, available for viewing right in the middle of the atrium of the Deliziosa. It's an abstract representation of mankind's impact on the world. That's a loose uh, description of what the piece signifies. I looked it up because this is one of our ships in, in Fort Lauderdale, so I take people on the ship all the time, and they always ask me. So that's an example of our fine artwork. Another great uh, ship available in the Greek Isles. This is a slightly different itinerary, also almost year-round. Costa Luminosa, the ship of light, sister ship to Deliziosa, 92,600 tons, 2,260 guests, double occupancy. Also out of Venice, that stop in Bari. If I had to characterize the Greek Isle stops on this cruise, I would say it may be, not maybe, more historic. Athens, Olympia, and Kotor, so less beach, more history for those history lovers, that niche that we talked about at the beginning of the presentation. And then this cruise happens to call on another great port of call in Croatia, which is split. And people are split, <laughs> no pun intended, between which port they like better. I've heard some people say they like Dubrovnik more. I've heard some people say they like split more. Nonetheless, if somebody's looking to do Croatia, we offer two great alternatives in addition to the Greek Isles out of Venice, almost year long and certainly through most of the spring, summer and fall in 2020. Now, another fun fact about the Casa Luminosa is that that will also be our ship that is coming to Fort Lauderdale this winter, starting in December of 2019. So your guests, we kind of say a taste of Italy in the Caribbean. If they want to do a European authentic vacation, they don't have to go as far and still be able to take advantage of Costa's authentic cultural experience, even out of Fort Lauderdale. We have a seven night holiday sailings, and these are available right now, by the way, uh, seven night holidays, Christmas and New Year sailing are starting at $499 per person, including NCS. And then we have 10 nights in 2020, 2019 and 2020, starting at $499. Those are available right now. There's still limited space available out of Fort Lauderdale on the Costa Luminosa. So if you have somebody looking for that winter uh, beach getaway vacation, what have you, please do consider the Costa Luminosa. She's a fantastic ship and she is available for guests to take advantage of from Fort Lauderdale, bringing Italy, as I mentioned, a lot closer to home. So we're really happy to have her here for the Caribbean season 2019-2020. This is another example of the Costa Luminosa. 
our work. So again, all that glass work is all that Murano glass that I've talked about. All that tile work that you see there is all fine Italian porcelain tile. And this artistic piece, this sculpture is by Botero. He's a Colombian artist, uh, very famous for his sculptures and his artwork. They're all very reminiscent of this style of work. And this piece is a multi-million dollar piece all on its own. So you can see another great example of the artwork available on board uh, Costa ships. Now, another fantastic itinerary, and I'm kind of pointing out the marquee uh, quintessential itineraries, but also some of the more unique itineraries, like this one, out of Stockholm. This ship sailing out of Stockholm to Northern Europe, the Costa Magica, is one of the best uh, Northern Europe itineraries. There's a lot out there, but what I love about this itinerary is that you spend two nights in Stockholm, one at the beginning and one at the end. This is not Stockholm is on my bucket list. I think this is one that I want to do myself, in addition to going to Croatia. But the one night in Stockholm at the beginning, one night in Stockholm at the end. So you do get to experience Stockholm, which I hear is an absolutely fantastic city. An additional stop in Helsinki, Finland, Tallinn in Estonia, and then an overnight in St. Petersburg as well. So really, uh, this itinerary, the, the key features are those overnights in Stockholm, that overnight in St. Petersburg, more time in port. So if you have somebody that that's one of their qualifiers, and maybe Northern Europe is uh, on their list, this might be a great itinerary for them to consider. Uh, everybody that's gone on this cruise, I have a colleague that went on this cruise and she absolutely loved it. Uh, this is on my list as well. Now, another unique itinerary in the winter, starting in December of 2019, the Costa Diadema, which is currently our largest ship, as I mentioned, just shy of 3,800 passengers, she is doing Dubai in the winter, starting December 2019, Another overnight in, in Dubai here, you do an overnight in Dubai at the beginning of the cruise, which is fun because you get to use Dubai, the ship as a floating hotel. Dubai hotels are not inexpensive, so this is another fantastic value for your guests to take advantage of. Uh, and then the additional overnight in Abu Dhabi, and then additional ports of call in Doha and Muscat. So another really cost-effective and very convenient way to see what is overall considered a pretty remote part of the world uh, by North American standards. So I hope that you'll consider Dubai again for this is for those people maybe looking for those destination collectors that want to do something different. Okay, as, as uh, Anna mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, I was a revenue manager. So I, uh, I have to talk about pricing. Um, I don't mean to laugh, but the screen has a lot of information on it. But I just want to talk about our pricing model because now that we know about the cruise line, we know about the ships, we know about the product, and we know about the itineraries, this is the nuts and bolts of how to sell a Costa cruise. And I oftentimes think, you know, being an ex-revenue manager that I should start with the pricing, but I don't want to lose everybody right from the beginning. So I also have heard that what you see last is what you remember first. That's an old saying in Olympic uh, judging. I happen to be an Olympic buff. So uh, I don't mean to make light of this. It's a very important slide, but it's a lot more daunting than it looks. This is our pricing model, which I think is very simple. We have basically two fare types for your passengers to take advantage of, basic and comfort. The comfort includes classic, premium, and deluxe, which are suites. We will get to that. So comfort are those categories. Basic is the most restrictive, usually least expensive, and least inclusive of our fare types. So it really is the bare bones fare type. Number one, you get a, low, a lower option. 15% of your fare is an instant penalty. So you will not, if you cancel or change your date, you will lose 15, 1.5% of your fare. So that's probably the biggest restriction is that a portion of that fare is non-refundable at time of booking. It's only on guarantee. You don't know what cabin you're going to get. It could be assigned right up until the day of embarkation. And once it's assigned, it cannot be changed. It's not combinable with any other offers, onboard credits, kids free, any of those promotions. None of those are combinable. No future cruise credit, no deluxe benefit. Choice of dining is not confirmed until you are on the ship. Room service and continental breakfast are available, but you will have a service charge. And then it's not combinable, more limited combinability with our Costa Club, which is our loyalty program that we'll talk about. So that is definitely a great option for guests that are very not picky, don't really uh, want, are not really picky about what time they dine, what cabin they have, and are just looking to get on the ship for as little money as possible. Now, what I happen to think is a much better option 
is to go with the comfort class. There's two ca there's three categories in, in comfort, classic, premium, and deluxe. The classic is those lower deck forward or, or aft cabins. Those are our classic cabins within the comfort class. It comes with a regular option and a regular cancellation penalty. So if you cancel outside of 90 days, you do get a refund on your deposit, just like you would find on any other major cruise line. It is combinable with other offers. Uh, the premium, same, cat same cancellation penalty, same option, better location, higher, more midship. It is combinable with other offers. When you book premium, you get a 10% discount on your next Cox to cruise. I think you have, I think it's 18 months to use it, it's given to you in the form of a certificate. So that's a great benefit of the premium category. Onboard benefits and deluxe only come with our deluxe suite, so we'll cover that. Now, what I think is probably one of the best features of this, there are so many, but the Brindiamo drink package is included in classic and in premium comfort class cabins. So when you pay your cruise fare, you get that drink package included, and we're gonna cover what's included in the drink package on the next slide. Remember that Brindiamo package is included because it's a really, really fantastic value. Then choice of dining, 24-hour room service, and continental breakfast are completely included in premium, nominal fees in classic, and these fare classes are completely combinable with our Costa Club benefits, which we'll cover in a couple of slides. Then last but certainly not least, for the suites, category S and above, mini suites are not included, mini suites are considered premium, you get all of these great benefits, the suites, butler service, priority boarding, uh, one day in the spa, breakfast, lunch, and dinner in the supper club, which is a club restaurant, specialty restaurant, uh, completely combinable with Costa Club, and you also get the intended Tory drink package, which is an upgraded drink package, our deluxe drink package, which comes uh, included exclusively with the suite. Now, for people that are booking our comfort class, in classic or premium, they will get the Brindiamo included. Remember, basic does not get the drink package. The Brindiamo drink package, if you were to purchase it, is a value of $42 per person per day. And even that, if you were to purchase it outright, is a fantastic value. The packages include all beverage gratuities as well. So we don't, that's $42 per day would include all gratuities. But this package, as I mentioned, the Brindiamo is included with our Comfort Classic and Comfort premium cabins. And you can see there what it includes, beers and wines by the glass around the ship at all, at all the bars, also in the supper, in the dining rooms and the specialty restaurants. You can see the different aperitifs that are included, the whiskeys that are included. For example, Johnny Walker Red, Jim Beam, Doors, Jameson. So, you know, not the deluxe, not the, not the premium brands, but certainly not the well brands either. These are well-known name brands that are available for your guests on the packages. Beef Feeder Gin, Stoli and Smirnoff Vodka, Bacardi Rum, Cuervo de Tequila. You have uh, single mixed drinks like rum and Coke or gin and tonic or vodka sodas are included as well. As I mentioned, beers and wines by the glass, fruit punch, Shirley Temples, alcoholic free drinks, but also all of those Ely coffees and Daman tea selections are included with the beverage package as well. Fruit juices, bottled water, and sodas all included, sparkling and natural water, all included with the Brindiamo package, which is already included when you book comfort class. So by booking that, you really do make it an all-inclusive, hassle-free, thought-free, you know, fun experience for your guests. It really is a fantastic offering for uh, uh, all-inclusive drink packages. These packages, I've seen them go for significantly more than this and uh, at $42 per day, and it's great that it's included with the comfort class. So just talking about Costa Club, because you may have seen some of our, our color codes for the Costa Club. It's a very simple program. It's basically the further out you book, the higher up you book, the more points that you get. You can see the structure there. For example, within 90 days, 100 points for inside, 150 points for Ocean View, 175 for balcony, and 450 for suite. If you book further out and further up, you get more points. So it's a points-based system. And then you can see the different levels for the Costa Club. Ambra is the introductory, Aquamarina, up to a 2,000 points, Corallo, Coral, Perla, Pearl, Perla Oro, uh, which is Gold Pearl, and Perla Diamante, which is Diamond Pearl, the highest uh, Costa Club level. And you can see different discounts on select dates, anywhere from 5 to 20%, depending on your uh, level. Also, you have upgrades available depending on your level. So those are your boarding, your reservations benefits, 
When you get on board, you have different benefits depending on different levels. Chocolate in your cabin, a welcome gift for the introductory onboard class. You get a complimentary birthday cake and all. You get um, free bottled water if you're an aqua marina, sparkling wine, and even fruit basket and sparkling wine depending if you're higher up in levels in the Perla, Perla Oro, and Perla Diamante. So that's our Costa Club, and we do have a very rich uh, list of uh, past guests, not only in Europe, but also in North America. So your guests very well may be a Costa Club guest. Um, that's about 45 minutes, so I think we did pretty well on time, and uh, sorry for the little snafu in the beginning, but we got through it. And um, just remember, Costa's value, value proposition, the unique and authentic international experience without the international price tag. Grazie, which means thank you very much in Italian. And uh, thank you so much for your time and attention. I hope it was informative and um, thanks again for joining me. Uh, I was really happy to be able to present to you today. Perfect, thank you so much, Silvio. And we have some questions coming in that I hope you'll be able to answer. Our first one is from John, who is wondering, because you have four embarkation ports in the Mediterranean, are cabins sold as guarantees or can guests get a cabin assignment? Both. Both they 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 treat each uh, they treat each uh, of those segments as if it were its own ship. So for example, they'll say I have a thousand cabins in Marseille, a thousand cabins in in Savona, whatever the case may be. So they they will manage inventory and all of those individually. I'm glad I don't have to do it, but they do it in Europe in revenue management. And you can some there are cabins available, but there may be guarantees available in those segments as well. Okay, perfect. And this next question is from Donna, who is wondering if the North America pricing model applies to sailings originating in Europe and is pricing in dollars or euros for the cruise? Uh, you are going to, very good question. Yes, that North American pricing model is available for all of our ships fleet-wide, uh, regardless of destination. You're going to book through Costa's North American office and we do business only in US dollars. So you will pay us in US dollars. However, your guests, once they're on board, we'll pay in euros if it's a cruise that's starting in Europe. Okay, perfect. And it looks like that was our last question. So thank you so much for all of that information, Silvio, and thank you everyone for joining us. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye.